hello and welcome to this teaching slash rules video for One Deck Galaxy, where uh, I'm going to lead you through all the rules of the game and show you how to play. Uh, so setup is already done. We've chosen the Felici scientists and we're facing off against the Nebelwuber colony fleet. We've already set up the starbase with uh, two fleets and a random science card added. So we're ready to start. So the first thing we should do is talk about the different areas of the table that have been set up here. Um, most importantly over here on the left is your homeworld area. We've got your homeworld, the Felici, which is Aravine, and your society, which is the scientists. These two cards go together, and they represent uh, your people, your civilization. So on these cards are all of the stuff that you're going to get to be able to do. On the left side of the homeworld is a series of icons representing the dice that you'll be able to roll each turn and the number of tech discs you'll get. On the society card, you have a list of the milestones you'll be trying to reach to increase your federation level. Each time you achieve a milestone, you're going to move a federation token over to it, and your federation level will have gone up. When you get up to federation level 5, things are great. You want this. Um, among other things, it's going to make your society special tech better, and it will allow you to confront the later tiers of the adversary. Speaking of the adversary, let's talk about their zone over here. You have the main adversary card, the Nibelber Colony Fleet, their confrontation card, and their rules card. The rules reference lists all of the rules that they have that are special and are different than the base game itself. Um, and it is the, the document that you want to go to if you have a question. There's also the adversary quick guide, which provides a colloquial description of each of the adversaries. Uh, but this is what you need while you're playing most often. Uh, so, on the adversary card, there's a series of things. At the bottom is a list of all the phases of the turn, uh, and the things that that adversary does in icon form. Uh, again, the back of the adversary quick guide has a little icon reference to represent what all those things do. Um, over here on the right, we have adversary tokens. Your ultimate goal during the game is to remove all of these. If you remove all four, you win. As you can see, as you remove them, they'll reveal numbers which change the gameplay effects of the Nibelwubers. Uh, and if you remove the fourth one, it just says win, which means you win. You'll do this by filling in the row next to each of these tokens, which we'll get to later on during the action phase. The next area we should talk about is the general supply. General supply is up here and it contains all of the dice, the tech discs, and the starbase discs uh, that you'll be using during the game. Uh, there are essentially four places that dice and discs can be. The general supply, uh, your pool, which is where they'll be after you roll them for the turn, on a card, which is where they'll be if you put them on a card, uh, or in exile, which is outside of the game. When you exile a component, it's removed from the game entirely, and you don't use it for the rest of the game. Next to your homeworld, we have the starbase. Uh, the starbase is a new mechanic in One Deck Galaxy, which allows you to use less desirable dice like ones and twos for various purposes. Um, on the left side, there's an area to create fleets with pairs or triples. Uh, and on the right side, there's a place to put any sort of dice you want in order to gain research uh, science. So tucked under the star base on the two edges are cards representing your fleets and your science. You'll notice that the card on the left here has two icons showing. The backs of all of the cards in the One Deck Galaxy deck uh, have one or two icons on the edges, and these represent influence, which is used to track values for a variety of purposes. Um, when a card is tucked under, the number of icons that are showing represent one or two of that thing. In this case, it's fleets. Um, we'll go over some of the other cases later on during the action phase. Finally, this empty space over here is called the Discovery Zone. Uh, it is where all of the locations and encounters that come out of the Galaxy deck will be placed face up, and we'll get to that during the Discovery phase of the turn. So now, let's actually get to playing the game. Let's talk about all the phases of the turn, which are listed out here on the bottom of the Adversary card. Uh, there's the Adversary phase, where the bad guys get to do their stuff. There's the Discover phase, where you will fill up the Discovery Zone if there's empty slots. There is the action phase, where you'll roll your dice, use them all, and do all of the cool things that you get to do. And there's the results phase, where you get to see the benefits of placing all of those dice and using techs. So let's start out with the adversary phase, since that's how the turn actually starts. Uh, there are five things that happen in the adversary phase, uh, and in addition, sometimes there are icons down here representing extra things the adversary does. Uh, look at each adversary's turn reference for information on that. 
The first step of the adversary phase is that you resolve any pending events. So if you go through the entire deck and reshuffle, one of the events at the bottom will pop out, and it would get revealed during the step of the turn and do some sort of negative thing. Since this is the first turn, this hasn't happened yet, so don't worry about it. Next up is time gets spent. So uh, down here, there's a little X in a box that represents one card gets discarded for time passing. Uh, so that just goes in the discard pile. Next up, the adversary gains influence. So as I mentioned when we were explaining the star base, um, cards get tucked underneath other cards to represent uh, values. This is the Nibuuber sort of charging up to steal a colony um, as is their big thing. After that, if there were any encounters in the discovery zone, they would each gain an influence as well, but there aren't any yet, so that doesn't happen. Uh, and finally, uh, if any of those encounters got to three influence, they would resolve and do a bad escalate action. So in addition to the basic steps, the Nibuubers have a little exclamation point here. Um, we look at this and it says, adversary, end of phase. Uh, if the adversary has three influence, discard them and they gain a colony. Otherwise, escalate. Escalate is a keyword that is used by each adversary in a different way. For the Nibuubers, they get to gather the dice that they have over here on the left. So a yellow, a blue, and a red. A pink, rather. Uh, they're going to roll them. And for any of them that are equal to or higher than this number in the uh, diamond here, uh, and if you had removed some of the adversary discs, this would change, uh, they get to take those dice and place them in their hoard. So they're sort of holding on to these dice, hoarding them, and they're going to get more and more every turn, which is bad for you. All right, with the adversary phase finished, we move on to the discovery phase. Uh, the discovery phase, discover phase rather, is a simple step. We're going to add cards in the deck until there are four cards face up in the discovery zone. Uh, and there's no meaning to how these are arranged. You can put them in a square, you can put them in a line. Uh, I'm just using the space we have available on the playmat. Um, so uh, we've got four cards out here. If this was a future turn and there were only one or two open slots, you'd just fill in that many from the deck. Uh, and if they were all full, you wouldn't do anything. And now it's time to go on to the meat of the game, which is the action phase. Uh, during the action phase, you get to do all the things. The first step of the action phase is the gather step, where you get the dice that you were entitled to based on your homeworld and colonies. So we're going to get five yellow dice, two pink dice, three blue dice, and two tech stars. So uh, these dice colors represent energy, materials, and diplomacy. Uh, we're going to roll all of them. I'm going to move all of this stuff over to the side because we have so much space. <laughs> I'm put them all up here. That, that's fun. That's a bad roll. Uh, so these dice and tokens form your pool. Uh, and your pool is the set of things that you have available to use uh, during the action phase. In a two-player game, each player has their own pool. You can't just grab your partner's dice. But you can share them in order to do things together in some cases. So during the action phase, you can do any number of things as long as you've still got dice left to, to do them with. Um, and there's no ordering or anything. You can do everything in whatever order you choose. The most important thing you'll be doing is placing dice into boxes. The basic rule of placing a die in a box is it has to be the correct color, and it has to be the value of the box or higher. So for example, this yellow 5 on Ristwin, we could put a yellow 5 in there, we could put a yellow 6 in there, um, and so forth. For large boxes, uh, you need to have several dice that total up to that value or higher. So for example, this uh, 5 plus x, uh, and x is 0 right now, we could just fill in with a single die, and that would be fine. But this 14, uh, we would need to put in several dice, and they sort of all just fit in there. There's not any space requirements. You just stack them up however you want. Um, in One Deck Galaxy, you are not restricted to talking to one card at a time. You can poke at all of them during the turn. So I can put some dice over here, some dice over here. I can put some dice in the confrontation card, uh, and they're all, that's all fine. Uh, in addition to boxes, there are rings. You can see there's a ring here uh, with two fleets inside of it. This is a new mechanic in One Deck Galaxy where you're going to be placing uh, tokens from the Starbase. Uh, I missed placing the Starbase token on here during the gather phase, but it's there. Um, and what that means is spend two fleets from the Starbase and take a token from the Starbase and cover it up to represent filling in that box. Um, there are also some rings that would have science costs in them where you'd spend science from the right side of the Starbase. Uh, and that's how those work. 
So let's talk about why you would fill in all these rows. So in the discovery zone, there are two different types of cards. There are locations and there are encounters. Locations have a blue border, encounters have a red border. Locations are cards that you will make progress on over several turns potentially, trying to get to a total influence value printed in the top left of the card. For example, wrist one here, you need six influence to complete it, when you could then claim it as a tech or a colony. Encounters, on the other hand, are all or nothing. You need to fill in the entire card during one turn, and then you would get to claim it. But you only have a certain amount of time to do so. Every encounter will gain an influence each turn, and if it gets to three, it will instead escalate and wind up becoming uh, science instead. So the rows on the location cards uh, each have an influence value to their right, which is how much influence you will get there if you fill in that row during a turn. Uh, for example, again, wrist one here, if you fill in the top row, you'll get one influence. If you fill in the bottom row, you'll get two. And if you fill in both, you would get three. And that influence becomes, um, that influence gets tucked into the card during the results phase. So uh, on a turn, I could wind up filling in uh, a row here and the card here. We'll probably wind up doing this. Uh, and both of those would provide separate benefits. The confrontation card uh, is how you make progress against the adversary. And this can be flipped over freely anytime you want, as long as there aren't any dice on it. You have essentially two different ways to confront the adversary. For the Nebel Ubers, there's Blockade, which uses lots of energy dice and fleets. Or there is Send Envoys, which is a bunch of diplomacy dice. Uh, and based on which homeworld you took, one of these options might be better. Or based on technologies or things you do during the game, and you can switch back and forth during the game. You can send envoys and then blockade and switch back to that one again. Uh, all you have to do is fill in the top row here, and then during the results phase, you will get that adversary disc. Finally, we have the starbase. So uh, the starbase is sort of the home for the misfit dice that you don't get to use in other places. Um, or if you really want to, you can just throw a bunch of dice there and, and bolster your fleet and science uh, supply. Uh, so the starbase boxes are gray, which means any color of dice can go there. Uh, for each of these rows, you'll see the top can be any two dice, you'd get one fleet. The second is a pair of two of the same value, so we can use these two ones, which are otherwise not great, and they could become two fleets. And the bottom row is uh, three equal signs, which means three of a kind. As you upgrade the starbase, those values, those uh, conversions will get better, and uh, that is a good thing to do. On the right side of the star base is the research lab, and literally any number of dice can go there of any color. Uh, at the end of the turn, during the results phase, you'll get to spend them, uh, in this case, three to launch a probe, which would be a top card of the deck as a science, uh, or one for each science icon in a location to study it and turn it into science. In addition to the dice you roll each turn, you're entitled to a certain number of tech discs, each of which can activate one of the technologies you've acquired over the course of the game, or that you started with. Every homeworld and every society start out with their own technology that you can use. And as you claim cards, you will be tucking them underneath your homeworld to show additional technologies that you have available. Um, right now, uh, the Felici have a tech that says resolve up to two locations, uh, sorry, resolve up to two location rows, and then uh, discard dice used. So that would let you do like a small results phase early to get influence onto a location, and maybe do it twice during a turn. Not particularly useful for our situation, but it could be in other cases. The scientists would allow us to spend fleets to launch probes. This is really cool if you need science early during the game. And what you would do to activate a tech is just take your tech disc, put it down there, and you do the thing that it says, and then that's it. Each tech can be activated once per turn. Once it's got a tech disc on there, it's used up essentially. You'll also notice that your society special tech has three tiers on it, with federation level icons to the left. As your federation level increases, that tech will get better. You can always choose to use a lower tier if you want to, but usually you want to use the best one available. Next we have the calibrate action. Calibrate action represents the two things you see here on the bottom of your starbase. You can calibrate by spending fleets to increase a die or decrease a die by one uh, for each fleet you spend. Or you can spend three or more science, and for every three science you spend, you get to roll a black die and add it to your pool. The last thing you can do is transform two dice into an ultra tech die, a black die. Uh, black dice are cool because they are wild. A black die can go into any color of box, um, and to change two dice into a black die, you take them aside, 
look at whichever one has the lower value, gain a black die of that value, and then discard the two dice. You can do this any number of times a turn, as long as there are still black dice in the supply to do it on. So let's take a look at what we can do with our dice this turn. Like I said, it was kind of a bad roll, but you know, bad rolls happen, you mitigate them as best you can. Uh, so let's take a look at this unseen card. So in counters, you have to do the entire thing all at once in order to finish it. Uh, so the first thing we have to do is fill in this little disc here with two fleets. We luckily have two fleets, because that's what you get during setup. So we're going to spend those. Uh, and spend fleets go to the discard pile. We take the star base disc and cover it up. We then need a 5-4-3. Um, we have 6-5-5, five, five, which is good enough. And then we need 8 pink. So we have 6 pink, uh, 6 materials. So we need two more. What we're going to do here is actually turn two of our other dice into a black die with value two. And that gets us three, six, eight, which fills in that box. So what we have left over, three, a one, and a one. It's not fantastic. Uh, but luckily, we can use those over here on the star base to get a couple more fleets and replace the ones we just used up. Uh, there's one last action I want to go over, which is special because of the Nebu Uber. So, in addition to the basic actions you get, sometimes the adversary will add an action type of their own. For the Nebu Ubers, this is called the Negotiate Action, and it's listed on their reference card. And it's how you get your dice back from the Horde. You essentially have to buy them back from the Nebu Ubers. Uh, so twice per turn, you can make a purchase from the Horde, spend either six science for all yellow dice, four fleets for all pink dice, uh, three influence from locations for all blue dice, five tech discs for all black dice, or dice totaling 20 for all the tech stars on there. Uh, half of them go to your pool, and half back to the supply. So we're not going to do this in the first turn. I just wanted to point out it's an option. And that's represented here, this little exclamation point on the Nebel work card that says, hey, there's a cool action that you can do during this phase. So in this case, we're not going to do any of our techs. Uh, but for the sake of explanation, I'm going to imagine that we rolled a few extra dice uh, and placed them on some locations. So I'm just going to pretend that we rolled two sixes. Look at this. Look at this great imaginary roll. We are really good at this game. Uh, we have this extra stuff in our pool because I want to actually go over filling in a location as well. Uh, so in addition to the rules of placing dice into boxes on a location, Every location has a restriction or some sort of rule on it. For Ristwin, uh, it says, restriction, all dice here must be the same value. So you would think, if you weren't reading this, you know, I could fill in all four of these boxes and it would be great. Uh, we can get three influence, but that would violate the rule because all of the dice in the card have to be the same value. So we need like four fives or something. Uh, but we can do this and get a couple of those there, and that's great. Uh, and now let's just take these leftover three dice and put them into the research lab. Uh, leftover tech disks don't get used up. Um, they go back to the supply at the end of the uh, results phase. So with the action phase done, let's move on to results and resolve all of the things we did, including the imaginary dice we rolled, just for the purposes of demo. The first thing we resolve during the results phase are locations and encounters. Uh, for each card, uh, each location card, we look at every row that's filled. In this case, we filled the bottom row. Uh, we get rid of the dice there, and we add influence location until uh, we've added enough. So an important part about adding influence to places in the game. Influence anywhere is always represented by the fewest cards possible. So if we already had one influence there and we added a second one, we would take the one and spin it to become a two. You never have two singleton influences at a place. You will only ever have twos in one one. So Ristwin now has two out of the six influence required to complete it. So a couple more turns and we can actually finish that card off and get it as a colony or a tech. The Unseen, on the other hand, we have actually filled in completely. Since it's an encounter, you need to fill in the entire card. You take everything off of it, and then you get to claim it. So claiming it is the most important part of the game because you get more cool stuff. You have two choices when you claim a card. You can either tuck it as a colony, which will give you more icons, or you can tuck it as a tech, which will give you a new option to do. In this case, the tech is really cool. We could spend the tech disc to just gain two fleets. That's really nice, because gaining fleets is good. 
This has, of course, left an empty spot in the discovery zone, which will get filled up next turn during the next discover phase. The next thing we resolve is the star base. First off, we look at the left side and get fleets according to how many rows we've filled in. We filled in the second row, which entitled us to two fleets. Then we go over to the right side, the research lab, and we see that we have three dice. So we have a couple options here. Uh, there's probe. We could flip the top card of the deck for three dice. And cards can have two, three, or four science on them. This is kind of a random chance. Um, we could come out better or worse than studying one of the locations in play. Our other option is to spend the dice there to study a location. And you spend one die per science icon on it, minus one per influence you've already got there. And you just get that location as a science card. So we're going to probe. So we're going to discard these three dice. We get the top card of the deck, and it is a four. So we actually came out ahead. Always good to have extra science there. Uh, after we do this, we could upgrade the star base. The upgrade cost for the class one star base is eight science. And if we paid that, we would flip this over and uh, reveal a new star base, which has extra disc slots and sort of better conversions. Uh, there are four classes of Starbase, and the higher you get, the better they are. The last thing we do during the results phase is resolve the confrontation card. Uh, so if we had filled in the top row, uh, we would be able to take the adversary disc off of there and place it on the Starbase, sort of claim it. Each adversary disc you claim is one shield against losing. It's probably important to tell you how you lose the game. So far we've talked about how you win, which is by removing all the adversary discs. Uh, but each of the adversaries has a condition called Overwhelm, and when the adversary overwhelms you, you lose. Unless you've claimed an adversary disc. If the adversary overwhelms you and you have an adversary disc, you can discard it from the game, uh, exile it, and then you do not lose. Uh, and you can do that once per token. So if you confront three times, you essentially have three extra situations in which you are not overwhelmed. The overwhelm condition for each adversary is listed on their reference card. For the Nibelubers, it says at the start of the adversary phase, you were overwhelmed if the Nibelubers have at least twice as many colonies as your Federation level. Uh, so currently, you have Federation level 1. The Nibelubers have no colonies, so you're fine. Uh, but at the start of the adversary phase, you check to see if you're overwhelmed, and if you are, you lose, unless you discard the token. So there you have it. Those are the core rules of One Deck Galaxy and how to play. Thanks for watching the video, and we'll be hoping to put out more videos soon with more cool content.